Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Impact Wrestling Review. Well, Impact on Access TV Wrestling Review. I'm Miranda Morales, and I'm being joined uh, by the amazing Niger Chambers. Let's. Hello. I mean, yes, we're yes. we're here again. That was sweet of you. The amazing. I'm I'm subpar. You are the mer- uh, amazing. Miranda of many shows, Miss Miranda Morales, who's not only knocking out reviews on multiple outlets, but back announcing, uh, should we say, full time for in this part time world. So, like, talk about amazing. How do you have enough hours in the day? Uh, the quick answer is I don't. Uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, you lose lack of sleep and you gotta rearrange <laughs> stuff. Uh, but you know what? Thanks for that. I, I am. Uh, back to, to ring announcing in the circuit out here on the West Coast. So it feels good to be back uh, in, a, in a wrestling ring. It feels great to be uh, back on shows. So uh, it is great. But it's also great to be here with you doing this Impact on Access TV weekly review. It is one of the highlights of my week. I hope it's a highlight for all of those who are watching uh, because we we love that, you know, you're watching this. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We definitely Definitely love and uh, appreciate the fan support uh, each and every week as we get to talk about something that we love and that we have a good time in doing. And and, I'll, and and all things considered in the world, this is something that takes our mind away from all the really complicated and difficult things. We come here and have fun. We hope yes. that you all enjoy. Now, I want to get into something really quick before we get into tonight's episode. Can we go back to this weekend about something that... I, I saw it get a little bit of buzz, Ooh. but it means huge implications to me. Okay. And maybe to you too. And maybe what? you thought about it. And maybe you thought about it, but just quickly forgot. But if you were just, you know, watching AEW's full gear, which AEW we watch, we, we typically don't name AEW on our impact review. Uh-huh. We always, we always just say other promotion in respect to this review. Yeah. But, we, we're wrong here. We're wrong because we got that old mindset of when you can't talk about other promotions when you're doing other promotions, right? Because that's that's the old that's way. That's true. Yeah, that's you. You leave it unnamed. I do mm-hmm. agree. We we try, you know, keep it uh, focus on Impact Wrestling because it is the Impact uh, on Access TV weekly review. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, n- not reviewing any other shows or any other places, just reviewing Impact. Yep, yeah, but. Why do we need to do that when you have who made a special appearance calling commentary for the Kenny Omega, um, why is his name, uh, Hangman Page, Man. Matt, Don Callis, the executive vice president of Impact Wrestling, yes. who not only called that match, he made it very clear what his role was in Impact Wrestling and how, you know, we know how much impact means to him, but he also state that his love, appreciation, and friendship with Kenny Omega. So while that may seem like a small tidbit, these things don't happen traditionally in the wrestling world. So seeing Don and hearing Don call at one of AEW's biggest pay-per-views after just coming off of Impact's pay- biggest pay-per-view, it's like, oh, yeah, this is the world we live in now. It's cohesion. So, and, and, and much like Cody said on his media call that the bridges are down, we're open for business. This is the mindset going forward. We see Impact stars working in New Japan. We see Impact stars working at ROH. Now we see Impact stars at AEW. The question now is what's next? Well, yeah. if you were excited about Don Callis being on commentary, you know, obviously give us a shout right in the comments right now. But the big question is now is, well, do you remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about arguably one of the best tag teams in all professional wrestling. And we also talk about one of the best tag teams in all of professional wrestling who is currently your Impact Wrestling tag team champs, who said that they would love to work this other tag team by the name of formerly known as The Revival, now known as why am I why is everything slipping out of my head right now? FTR. Uh, FTR, thank you. Um, so and, and and we know that they've been given a blessing. They said we, we would love to make this work. Well, 
Let me tell you what I'm thinking, folks. Well, the North is already equipped with the gold. They're ready to go. FTR just lost their championships mm-hmm. to the Bucks, which I hate. We'll talk about another year. Yeah, that's not now, on this show. Not important. But... Yeah. But now that you have them without the titles and with their subliminal tweets, if you have seen, you might want to check it out about, uh, I, I'm going to get the, I'm going to put a quote up in a minute. But they put out some subliminal tweets, which makes them seem very open for the possibility of other endeavors. Folks, is this the time now where we may be getting the North versus the FTR? Is this really the climate that we're on? Is this is it is it more possible than ever at this point? I mean, as far as more possible than ever, yes. I think that the the opportunity builds upon itself. Uh, I mean, the crossover uh, that we saw at Full Gear this past week is one, you know, that could seem subtle, but it's a big deal to have someone that involved in Impact to have an active role uh, at with AEW when really it kind of came out of nowhere, kind of came out of left field um, for fans, but that must mean something's in the works. And AEW loves tag team wrestling. If there's one thing that we know, is that they love and appreciate tag team wrestling. And even if that means venturing out of the company to produce and and welcome a a climate that supports fantastic tag team wrestling, it seems like they're going to go the extra mile. So I I think it's, it's, you know, more likely than ever. All the stars seem to align and yeah, now the FTR is no longer the tag champions. You know, it would have been so cool to have a champion versus champion match. However, that gets complicated because who's going to lose? But ultimately, um, you know, if both have been very open about doing this and both companies want to showcase their tag team division and both companies like tag team divisions and both companies are open to exploring partnerships, why not? Why? Just give the people what they want. FTR versus the North. Yeah, you're right. I mean, just to go a little bit back more about AEW, I mean, Cody talked about working another Nick Aldis match and more in more ways than enough. It's just because creative differences, They who wants their champion to lose? Mm-hmm. And it just wouldn't work. And with FTR not being the champions, I mean, they've already expressed wanting to work in Japan. Already, you can imagine that's already in their contract. Mm-hmm. Miro said the same thing, but more importantly, there is a lot of interest from Impact Wrestling and wanting to get this match to be done. And at this point now, when FTR was considered one of the best best tag teams in all in, in, in all of wrestling, sitting in NXT, these things wasn't possible mm-hmm. because they were they were under the E. And now that they are have some you, you can say creative freedom where they got to finally face the Bucks, the match that everybody wanted. Well, who's next? The North has to be the next tag team that we wanted to see a classic. And FTR are just walking classic matches. Like, we can say five, six stars, a billion stars. They're just that good. And I think there's so much interest in this. We've seen EC3 being able to do something within multiple promotions. This is something that we need to happen. I cannot wait to revisit this conversation uh, in the future. I, I think, the like you said, stars are aligned, and there's a lot of reason why we should be hyped about this. But mm-hmm. let's talk about the Knights um, quickly. You know, we got the tag team tournament uh, starting, the knockouts tag team tournament starting next week. Uh, we're four nights away from, um, from Turning Point on Impact Plus. And the first match I want to start talk about, and then obviously I'll give you uh, the keys to the car, and you can drive the, the, the vehicle for the rest of the night. Is Madison Rain being back in the ring? It gave me chills seeing her on the flyer, hearing that she was going to be back after last week, and seeing her tag uh, with Tennille Dashwood against Havoc in the band was just—it's just amazing. Number one, Madison Rain for everything she's done for this promotion, everything she's done for the Knockout Division, everything she's done for all professional wrestling. She's she's literally a, a walking uh, legend, and. Sure, she boasts about herself sometime on commentary as character, but let it be known that like seeing her in the ring just means everything. And you know, two times knockout champion. I think she's excuse me, knockouts tag team champions. I think she's six time knockouts champion. I, I need to check that actually before I even go any further. Five um, times. Five times. Okay, there we go. And 
it, and, and the fact that you know she has history with Nevaeh on the Indies. Uh, I like how they built. I like how they set up the thing with her and Tanil. Havoc and Nevaeh are finally clicking for me. Mm-hmm. Finally, this is just the match that it told the story that should just get us hype about the tag tournament because you're going to get these talent style of things. You have le- a legitimate roster here, and you're going to get a few more moving pieces as we've seen that. Tanil obviously doesn't play fair with anybody, but I don't think that I don't think that this should be the last time we see uh Madison Rain and in, in involved with this tournament. Sure, her calling it probably has higher value, but for me as a fan, I need to see her in the ring. What is your mm-hmm. thoughts? I I agree. I was really excited about this pairing of Tanil and Madison. I talked about it last week that it was old school and new school. Uh, Tanil has a lot of the same characteristics that would embody someone, say, who was part of, you know, uh, a new version of the beautiful people. Uh, you know, I mean, literally, that is all that that she focuses on. Um, and I do see the value of both sides of of. Uh, Madison being on commentary for this tournament, but also being in the ring. Um, now, an interesting part that came from this, though, is that this pairing didn't work as well as Tennille had hoped for. Um, and with that, after they, they lost the match, she went to go find Jordan Grace, who originally had proposed or was trying to propose uh, teaming with Tennille um, last week during locker room talk. And, you know, Tennille shut her down. Now she seems to have found the error of her ways and uh, is now willing to to be in a team with um, with Jordan Grace. So we're going to see that at turning point, uh, Grace pretty much said, OK, at turning point, you're going to get the opportunity to uh, to prove yourself. So we're going to have Tennille Dashwood and Jordan Grace as a team versus Taya and Rosemary, which that's going to be really interesting to see that dynamic against a very established, not only just two established women in the knockouts division, but a very cohesive and established tag team. So, um, you know, it seems like Madison Reigns out of the picture, but maybe not yet because there's still a few other people who may be uh, lingering. Alicia Edwards, you know, may be out, out with a partner or, or this could be an opportunity for Madison Rain to bring in a partner herself, i.e. maybe someone she's already been a former Knockouts Tag Team Champion with, you know? It, it leaves mm-hmm. a lot of good speculation. I think that that could be the better direction for Madison, even if they don't make it that far, or mm-hmm. that's exactly what it takes in order to make it that far in the tournament, bring in women who who know what it means to be a knockouts tag title holder so uh you know at the pairing itself unfortunately didn't uh come to fruition as, as good as Tennille had hoped for uh but it now leaves a lot more questions about what what the landscape of the tournament is going to look like yep i agree madison hasn't missed the step we last time we seen her in the ring with slam reversary i i, I want more I hope yeah. they, I think she's, I think she's definitely almost irreplaceable on commentary, but they need to, <laughs> Tom Callis need to make more appearances on commentary at this rate, if that's what's going to happen. But I, I want to see Madison Rain involved with it. I think that, um, I, I think it's almost criminal to bring these titles back and not have her involved in this tournament mm-hmm. in some way, shape or form. Um, if she's not going to be in it, then I want to see her present the titles over, uh, I want her to be treated as the walking living legend inside yeah. of impact that she is. And that, and that, and that's not an overstatement at all. I mean, you literally have to go back and understand that when it, when it comes to women's wrestling, we're absolutely blessed to be at the plateau that we had now, but before then they weren't given chances. They didn't get main event matches and, 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 and impact did a good job in highlighting them. But now that everything has started to really come full circle and in all promotions, I think that, you may tend to forget what Impact has done, what people like Sheet has done over these years. And I think that now with just so much emphasis on this knockout division and the spotlight on them for all the time that's involved, let's not forget who is a locker room leader of Impact Wrestling. Mm-hmm. So, all right, where are we going next? Uh, well, let's go to uh, Rohit Raju versus TJP because this was a very interesting stipulation. If TJP lost, he would not be able to challenge for the X Division Championship again 
as long as Rohit held the title. Um, this match ended in just the way you thought it would. Another Rohit Raju shenanigan. And uh, kind of screwing TJP uh, out of not only this match, but now future opportunities for the X Division Championship. Again, I mean, Rohit seems to, to be very comfortable in this role and utilizing, uh, you know, his, his strategy um, in, in the ring and really taking advantage of every opportunity to distract, uh, to maybe do a little bit of cheating. You know, it depend, depends on how you view it. But um, he was successful in this, and now TJP will not be able to challenge for the X division championship again, as long as Rohit is holding the title. Yeah. See, here's the tricky thing with that. TJP is not done here. Exactly. Just, we we'll, know, we'll, we know that there will be some other match where he's going to end up tricking Rohit, causing him to win to causing whoever the opponent to win and TJP getting a shot eventually. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I was going to say, or you know who TJP used to wrestle under? If TJP oh. <laughs> can't oh, go for the that. X Division title, but maybe someone else can. Yes. Yeah, Suicide did just kind of disappear, didn't he? <laughs> he did, and he disappeared. So we know that, you know, Suicide, that gear is still around, and he has wrestled as Suicide. TJP may not be able to face him, but there ain't nothing in the books that says Suicide can't. Oh my goodness. Now that is that is them that's some good thinking there. Look, I'll say this. Rory Raju as the champion, I just grown and grown and grown with this character to really appreciate, love the present tree. Um, and then now we we, you know, little if you doubted him like I did, um, you see that he could put on a top tier match. This is a top tier match on a weekly show against one of the best in the world on TJP. And this was a really solid match. It told the story, it kept both of their gimmicks very much intact. And they still tell a story as we're talking about the possibilities of what TJP can do. But Rohit Raju put on a good match still with some little bit of trickery, but not just the weasel that we've seen in the past. So uh, let's go with the with the with the, the title. And I think him staying with the title until somebody pulls a Rohit Raju on Rohit Raju mm -hmm. uh, is the only way to go. Would never want to see a clean win over him. It has to be some type of trickery. And yes. I love what you're selling right now with TJP. Now that mm -hmm. could be interesting. As we know, he has to be the next to have the championship soon. We've seen every other person who are a top contender in this division have uh, had a little run of some sort. Let's see what TJP can do next. Also, I think what will be interesting to see is will that championship take a trip overseas to New Japan? Mm. So, if Chris, if yeah. Chris Bay is no longer in this picture, then could why be. Not? And, and don't you want one of your most prestigious champions? Don't you want to make sure that that championship is in the talks, in the conversation? In the commentary, well, don't you want that? I was going to say, I mean, TJP is a very busy wrestler. So not only was he announced uh, for the New Japan tournament, but he's also announced for another wrestling promotion that's going to be airing uh, TV shows, uh, well, through through online uh, next next week called MLW. So, you know, when that too, I mean, there's, there's a lot of potential collaboration crossover, whatever you want to call it, um, on it. I could I could see that, you know, as a way for Impact to really branch out and leveraging someone like TJP, who is really, you know, really uh, all over the place. Yo, we're ki we're killing it with the theories tonight. <laughs> oh yeah, this is conspiracy theory central tonight, everyone. We got the theories on theories on theories on theories. <laughs> I'm, at some point, I'm just going to take a fake phone call and be like, wait, what'd you say? Breaking news what? Breaking news. <laughs> this is my phone. <laughs> That's your phone. <laughs> that, this is my phone right here. <laughs> That's how you know. They're That's not going to communicate through the real lines. That's how yeah, you know it's real That's exclusive. Too, it's too obvious. Yeah, That's of course. too obvious. Too yeah. obvious. Or maybe maybe your headphone jacks are like connected to something. Who knows? Well, they are, but you know, they, again, too obvious. It's too obvious to do it by <laughs> traditional means. You know, they're going to send the carrier pigeon uh, <laughs> with that, so that way it's exclusive. You know. Uh, so the Russell House shenanigans continues. Tommy Dreamer is continuing his investigation of who shot Johnny Bravo. Uh, 
and and we got, had several people interviewed this week. Uh, we had, uh, of course, Father James Mitchell, uh, Havoc interviewed, uh, one of the deaners. I don't remember. I, that's just doesn't, the way it goes. Matter. Doesn't that's matter. Good. That's good enough. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but uh, that continues. And with that, we did have uh, some of that boil over into the ring. Fala, Ba, uh, and Crazy Steve teaming up to face the team of Reno Scum. Um, I mean, Reno Scum look great. We haven't seen them regularly for quite some time. Um, we've, we've normally seen them as some kind of the henchman for one Ace Austin. Um, but we haven't seen him in a while either. So... Uh, this though was a match really just to, uh, I think to help put Reno scum over and also to kind of show, you know, where, where the Russell house shenanigans continue throughout the roster. So I did also love, uh, we had a great cameo by, uh, Tasha Steeles and Kira Hogan backing up their boy, Fala Ba. Uh, just, is, that what you, is that what you call it? After the, 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 uh, the, the thieving move? <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I mean, they stood up to Hernandez like those girls do not are not afraid of no one. So I, <laughs> I loved that period <laughs> that they are not afraid. Even a, an OG like Hernandez, Tasha and Kira will go up and be like, nah, -uh, you can't mess with our friend like that. So mm. I, I loved that segment. Um, and, and again, we'll continue to see some of those Russell House shenanigans. Uh, but, a, you know, a, a solid win by Reno Scum um, the, this week. And again, hopefully, you know, we, we saw also some great tag action um, by Team Triple XL, AC Romero versus uh, Chris A. And so uh, that was kind of this, this matchup as a product of the week before. Um, and Chris Saban alone. In this endeavor, his tag team partner is out and he got to uh, feel, you know, what it was like to to have that two on one and especially two huge guys with AC and Larry D. Yeah, I mean, now that Triple XL has this new grown attitude that we seen last week um, going after the top tag team in all of professional wrestling, I guess that's a smart move. Maybe not as we see Chris Saban picks up the win. But I also, again, I think they're just trying to prove their le legitimacy here. And I also think they're trying to make it very clear that they're heels and that they're players in the yeah. game and so on. Uh, but at the same time, I, I a little bit more time. I, I, think this yeah. is, I think this is working, but there's just a little bit more time for me. But the yeah. biggest thing yes. about it is Chris Saban is partnerless. And as we talked about last week, I think it uh I think it only makes sense that he went and had some beers with a uh, a good old friend of his, a good old ex tag team partner of his, as he needs some backup. And I think that, you know, I'm not gonna pat myself on the back, but <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you I, I mean, predicted I say, this. <laughs> you you did predict this. I mean, if I must say, if you're going to bring in James Storm, then do it the damn right way. And this is how you do it. Now I am all the way invested in James Storm. In his element, he pleaded his case. He had his aggression. He's back with his boy. Give me more right now. Now let's run that tag team back match and see who are mm -hmm. the meanest, biggest, and baddest in impact wrestling so good stuff impact on this story way to niche this together because at first i thought there was a little bit of cotton coming out of his teddy bear but it looks like rumple steel skin is back and ready to go teddy yes. broken okay. yes yeah so it's never never no one google that so no one figures out my age now no nah, no <laughs> don't worry about that but yeah we we do now have the team of, of chris saban and james storm while alex shelley is recovering and and yeah i mean you called this as a, a bound for glory and i think a lot of people kind of it more expected you know james storm to have a bigger presence um than kind of this one-off at bound for glory and not seeing him for a few weeks now so i, I think it's a, a great pairing um a great Great, maybe in between, but also, um, you know, if you're trying to put Team Triple XL over, putting them with two of the most established stars that Impact has ever produced, that's that's a good rub if I've ever seen one. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm ready to go. And I mean, it's, again, I know there's a lot of tag team stuff going on in, in Impact, but like 
<laughs> the men's division too is that definitely making some strides, and you know we'll figure out how it all works with the Motor City Machine Guns. But this is the nostalgia that we need. It, it uh, TNA fans want, and at this at this point now, ride the wave mm-hmm. until you get him in the singles division uh, and, and competition, which we know will eventually be the thing. So yeah, uh, yeah. So you know, wait wait to sell that pay per view uh, this week. If again, if you're going to be doing. Um, if you're going to be doing exclusive on Impact Plus, then give people a reason to want to do it. And this is a big time possibility match, shall we say, that can lead that way. And, and, other, and other matches as well, but tell stories through it to make people watch it. So uh, good. And James Storm is obviously somebody that a lot of people are invested in. So I'm, I'm definitely hyped about this. Yes. Now, some other interesting news in the tag division came from the Rascals. So we got to see them in the treehouse. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, they got a letter saying that they were being evicted from the Treehouse and from Impact Wrestling. So they announced that next week will be their final week with Impact. Now, that can mean a lot of different things. Uh, you know, it, it does make it seem like we are no longer going to be seeing the Rascals at, on Impact Wrestling. Um, I mean, that would be huge for Impact to lose them. They haven't had the best track record as of, of late. I mean, they have fantastic matches, but have lost the majority of them. Um, we've seen Trey Miguel kind of do his own thing in the main event picture and in the X Division uh, picture as well. Uh, but what are your thoughts? Is do you do we think where we are truly going to see uh, the last of the Rascals next week. I almost have nothing here uh, because they're almost invaluable to Impact, but we've seen them you been used in every tandem and strategy period. Singles, uh, how you splitting them up in, 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 in uh, tags. I, I just don't know where they go with this. Mm-hmm. This, was, this is something that makes me think that we're going to end up getting them to split in some extent. But like we've already seen them, we already seen that in a in a in a word. If you're gonna rebrand them to something, I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't yeah. know. I do want to say, I think the Rascals have one of the most unique uh, types of, of styles. Um, and even I love the, the treehouse gimmick. You know, that was so <laughs> f- borderline. Um, but I think it worked really well because I do think in wrestling, you need to have a little bit kind of a mature uh, audience sometimes. You can't keep treating everyone as their children. So I loved kind of the innuendo that the treehouse provided and the, the subtlety and the joke along with it um, that as an adult you can kind of laugh at as a kid you may not get but it's nice when you have content that is a little bit more directed towards an adult than uh, as kids and so I think it's it's something that's very unique about impact that I wish I could see more of because you don't really see that with other promotions with that type of of humor but you know that wasn't the last of of, you know the the rascals that we saw for the night Um, we had Chris Bay versus Eddie Edwards. Um, and beforehand, Sandy Callahan went to Chris Bay and kind of talked him up uh, just to hype him about for the match and help him prepare. And Chris Bay knew exactly what he was getting into with Eddie Edwards. Eddie sneaking the the win, and I wouldn't say sneak, but I mean, uh, the, the the match overall was fairly quick, very fast paced, um, and one that I didn't expect to be finished so soon. But afterwards, uh, we did see, you know, Chris really upping his aggression, um, trying to use a, a steel chair on on Eddie. Um, after that, we had Sammy come in. Um, and eventually Ken Shamrock, but also in defense of Eddie Edwards, we had uh, the the world champ, um, Rich Swan, and uh, the Rascals come to help out Eddie Edwards. So we had some, you know, we, we continue to see this duo of Sammy Callahan and, um, and, and uh, Ken Shamrock really mm-hmm. becoming a, a threat to Eddie Edwards, to Rich Swan. I mean, that that team and pairing and now Chris Bay in the mix. I mean, the commentary did talk about last week. We saw them, uh, with, um, and now his name escapes me. Um, with Eric young, Eric, um, yeah. yeah, with Eric young. So, I mean, that trio was pretty menacing, uh, just thinking about it, but adding Chris Bay to the mix, I mean, who that could be a really dangerous group of men uh to come you know that that to come across so well, uh 
what I like about this the most is that we're getting a clear, definitive uh, answer as to who are faces and who are heels. Mm -hmm. And I also think that Chris Bay has floated between the two. But you're putting him with monster heels now. So he's still very young. So I think this is an opportunity to see how he really can mesh with this abundance of talent that he's involved with here. Really is. Um, So uh, I'm... Excuse me. I'm definitely excited to see where this can go, and I definitely want, uh, I definitely want more, uh, because they they're they're doing a really good job with anything with Sammy Callahan, yeah, and, and these monster hills, and so like it's this is going to get interesting. There's, there's I no I wasn't I wasn't completely sold on this new version of Sammy Callahan at first, but now I am <laughs> because we still see the underlying Sammy Callahan that we've known for years as as a monster heel. It just looks a little bit different. Um, and that to me was, that's the most important. If I could still recognize Sammy Callahan and, but he just, you know, the strategy is a little bit different. His teamwork's a little bit different. All of that, you know, uh, yeah. uh, evolution, evolution, you know, is, is that that's all. And that's one of the best things uh, that anyone can do in their career is evolve. And we still have, you know, the destructive monstrous Sammy Callahan, but he's with some new friends now. And, but he's still, Laying in the punishment, and especially Eddie Edwards, yes. that guy cannot catch a break. No, um, <laughs> no. Mm. But an interesting thing that did come out of this as well is that uh, Rich Swan proposed a tag match next week with the Rascals to celebrate their final week uh, on Impact, uh, where he's going to be partnering with Trey. Um, and so that too was very interesting. Like you talked about too. I mean, maybe they go in different directions. Maybe the rascals aren't the, the iteration that we know them as. And it does seem like Trey has kind of been on the forefront of the individual that they're going to be putting a little bit more time and, and direction into. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of an interesting aspect, uh, of, that we'll see next week. Yeah, look, there's a couple of things I want to talk about this. I don't think they're going anywhere because I don't think based on their recreational activities that that may be totally accepted in every promotion. Mm-hmm. So that's my first thing. There's no way they're going to take a step back and go back to the to the indies. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then Zach, Zachary Wentz, significant other, just signed a long, long-term deal with Impact. He's absolutely not going nowhere. So, and Trey, I mean, Trey, I mean, that's a hot, co- he's a hot commodity. As much as I like uh, uh, Dez, I mean, any company would be happy to have any of the three of them. Yeah. But like, I, I don't, I mean, they're, they're legit friends. Like, I don't mm-hmm. see this as a, as a, as a form of where they're going next. Or maybe yeah. they test the waters a little bit. Who knows? I, but I do yeah, not we'll see. see them. I don't see them ultimately gone. I see a new iteration of some sort of them. Of this yeah. happening. Well, so. again, it, it's weird that as, you know, going away present, quote unquote, Rich Swan decides to, to separate them. So Dez and Wentz are going to be <laughs> on one side. Trey and him are going to be the other. So they're already alluding to something. Yeah. So we, we will see. So tonight's main event, uh, Machine Gun Carl Anderson versus Josh Alexander, setting us up for what we're going to be having at Turning Point this weekend. The Good Brothers versus the North for the Impact Tag Team Championships. Now, this was classic textbook Josh Alexander, really targeting every part of Carl Anderson, starting with the back to the arm. I mean, he is the lethal weapon for a reason. Um, But ultimately, this match ended in uh, no contest, double disqualification. Um, Ethan Page got involved and uh, hit Carl from from behind. and then, you know, uh, both good brothers got involved. Just a big kind of big melee at the end. So we didn't really get a resolution with this match. But really, it was, again, to set up what we're going to see at Turning Point this Saturday in the for, for the tag titles. So, I mean, it's, not, it's true. It's, it's, it's classic impact. Whenever the big match is coming up with the with this tag team division or anybody mm-hmm. involved, they make it they make this type of ordeal. To kind of round it off until then, it's always some type of false finish or whatever. Yeah, then be. you know, just leaves you kind of wondering because there's always too that myth of whoever has the upper hand on the go home exactly. show is gonna lose. So at this point too, they probably wanted to leave it very 
ambiguous, be, yeah. you know, because you, you really don't know what's going to happen on Saturday. So, um, I mean, the match itself was, was good, a uh, great singles match. And again, if you're a big fan of Josh Alexander, very textbook classic uh, match for, for him. And also great, you know, the Good Brothers themselves. Again, we've seen them wrestle now more in their time and impact than we've seen them in other places. So, um, and they continue to really just tease um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the truth. But they can also continue to tease, you know. I mean, we thought when they first came in, they were going to go straight for those tag titles. That didn't happen. It's been kind of more of a slow build mm -hmm. to it. So, I mean, they could they could really win at any time. Um, and even if they don't win on Saturday, that does not mean their name is out of the tag title contendership at all. doesn't matter who it is. Exactly. So, um, and the North, I mean, like I said, it does feel – like the tag division of old with the North as champions. It does look very different because you have a way different landscape in it, but it always feels just a little good, a little homey uh, to have the North as your tag champions. But, uh, you know, it remains to be seen uh, on Saturday at Turning Point. So that's that was really the bulk of the show. Anything, this year that uh, I didn't talk about or mention that you, you want to make sure we discuss? I was just going to add some sprinkles to what you were just saying. Like, just don't forget that the North also was uh, considered the bottom of the tag team division because mm -hmm. of their losses. And now look at them like a few weeks Back later. So, mm -hmm. like, it doesn't matter if the Good Brothers lose. They're always still going to be in the picture. Uh, but, yeah, this Saturday, uh, turning point. I totally forgot that that was coming this Saturday. Even us talking about it, I keep forgetting that it's coming this Saturday. Not in the sake of watching it, but the fact that we had to cover it. So we have to figure it out. Our schedules to kind of get out our review for that for you all. And I think the other thing I would add is, too, is I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if something crazy happens here. I mean, the next pay-per-view ain't until January. And if the things we're talking about tonight, if you're going to do something big, you got to do it on a big stage. So... Mm -hmm. I think we have to see how that kind of plays out on that note. But yeah, that's, that's all, that's all I got. That's all yeah. I got. Yeah. So uh, uh, overall great episode. And there was other little tidbits that we missed. So, you know, Deanna Perrazzo preparing for her match with Sue Young, uh, Kimberly may be out of the picture because of Sue Young, pretty much some horror movie stuff, a little <laughs> scary. Uh, we have Moose, uh, and Willie Mack happening. Willie Mack trying to get the uh, advantage before Saturday. Uh, and Moose continuing this new evolution of, of, of him. <laughs> um, you know, whatever he, he's doing. Uh, you know, there's definitely some some bits that they definitely plugged in uh, to help build up to Saturday. So they really established a really solid car for Turning point. This is an impact uh, plus uh, event too. So the fact that it's really stacked and it's so well set up for just and not just something on impact plus, but something that isn't a, a major pay per view. Um, mm -hmm. Kudos, kudos to them in the build up to this because it feels like I like these types of build ups sometimes more than the build ups to the pay per views because the the week of the the go home show for Bound for Glory just felt like a recap. This one actually <laughs> felt, and that's just the truth. But this one actually felt like progression of storylines and, and things yeah. that are teasing you for coming into Saturday. So yep. I like this iteration of storytelling a little bit more than what they did for the build up right before Bound for Glory. You're right about that. Yeah, I can't believe you remember that home going show for Bound for Glory. <laughs> so you said, I was like, oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, we don't talk about Ooh. that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, folks, I know that you're going to be checking it out this Saturday. So we will, just a matter of when we're going to review it. Hopefully we'll try to get the review out over the weekend, but don't hold us to us because life. But nonetheless, let us know what you thought about tonight's episode. Are you excited for this Saturday? Uh, how about you kind of book some of these matches? You all really got some really good ideas. God, that's something that somebody said in the comment that I should have remembered. I don't know. Um, Scott, the more, I hope your phone is ringing so that, you know, we can get some of these things into play. Uh, that we we'll could be you. talking about we'll yeah we'll, 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 we can you. definitely book some shows if you if you need us hit, hit your boy up yeah yeah we we'll, got we'll, we'll, we'll do the thing i don't need to sleep i sleep <laughs> sleeps for the week but yes yeah, so, as always folks thank you so much for watching us let us know in the comments what you thought about it how much you love miranda and what would you like to see this saturday on uh turning point how would you like to see that play out but 
Until then, folks, thank you so much for watching, and we are out T500. Bye-bye.